Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Robert with Sherburn Outdoors and it is diesel heater season. Been doing a ton of videos on diesel heaters. If you look around, there's a whole variety of these. And I got a lot of comments back saying, hey, can you set one of these things up from scratch? You know, versus having all the hoses and exhaust and everything hooked up on them. Today we'll be putting a diesel heater together from scratch as it comes out of the box. And so a lot going on with diesel heaters. I've been getting a lot of manufacturers sending it to me, and this is no different. This is the Wipro 8 kilowatt version. Now we did a test recently with the 5 kilowatt, the little kind of stubby one I like that goes under the tonneau cover. And I will say we got crazy test results out of that. On one gallon of diesel fuel on low, we went 30 straight hours and on high at maximum setting, we went 11 hours. So pretty good test. I'm kind of curious if this eight kilowatt version will do similar. It's a, it's kind of cute. It's more of a cube. It's a little taller. It's about 18.8 inches uh, tall and wide as well as 7.8 nine inches from here to here. So out of the box, it comes with an intake hose, an exhaust tube, a cute little remote, uh, has a muffler, as well as a bunch of uh, different gaskets and not gasket, but hose clamps and, and mounts, as well as an intake uh, filter. Has this cute little, uh, I guess diffuser, you can move air around if you want to. It doesn't really do a lot, but it'll go on the end. And then we've got our tube that comes out of here. This is pretty short. Um, I usually use a much longer dryer version. We'll kind of get to that in a bit that I buy off of Amazon. And then uh, the last thing, two things it comes with is a 12 volt cable that you can use to hook up to say 12 volt power source. In this case, we're gonna be using the Blue Eddy AC180. That's my go-to with 1152 watt hours of capacity. It's a great unit. And then I don't use these actually, I usually throw these aside. I buy this cable, which is 16 foot all off of Amazon. It's got the leads already built in and then it's got the cigarette lighter adapter that we hook into this 12 volt 10 amp. Even though these are rated at 15 amp, I use the 10 amp on here, I've never had a problem. With all that said, let's get started and let's put this together. We're gonna do a couple things. The first thing I usually do when I get these is I open them up just to make sure there's no kinks in the diesel line. I haven't had this happen in the past, but I've seen other YouTube videos where there was a kink and it didn't look like there was gonna be any capabilities for the diesel fuel to go up to it. So first things first in a test like this, we're going to open it up and then we're going to attach the intake hose. We're going to attach the exhaust and the muffler. We're gonna attach the 12 volt DC cable. We're gonna fill it up with diesel fuel, not gasoline, diesel fuel. I said uh, gas in a video a couple, a couple videos ago and I got a slew of comments uh, letting me know that it is diesel fuel. It is not gasoline. So it is, it's diesel. And then, uh, you know, we're just gonna start it up and it's that simple. You can be off and running with one of these things very, very quickly and we'll measure some temperatures coming out of it. And then I usually like to do a test, just like we did on this one to see if we got 30 hours. Let's fire this thing up and let's see how, low it'll, how long it'll go on one tank of diesel on low and on one tank of diesel on high. So you can get an idea of what your capacity is when you're out camping or if you're out RVing, van life, using it for a workshop, whatever. Now you can see here, there is a bunch of products and a bunch of parts. These are really being marketed as an all-in-one for everyone, uh, which is great, but you just need to kind of make it fit for your application. I do overlanding. I throw the uh, rooftop tail on the back of my Jeep Gladiator. Here's kind of what it looks like. And so that is my application. This thing's always sitting outside with a hose going up, um, and it has, it has been great. So with further ado, let's crack this thing open, make sure we are good. Opening these things up. Now I will say the opening the taller ones is significantly easier than these shorter ones. The shorter ones have screws. These have actually have these latches. Let's just open it up here. So these have these latches and you, you do pull the fuel top off and then you just lift this right up. All right, looking at these units, they're pretty simple. Uh, on the front, we have the digital display. We have where the heat actually comes out that we'll be using. Uh, this is the heat exchanger sitting inside of here. This is the 1.3 gallon tank of fuel. And this is the fuel pump here. Sometimes these are loud, sometimes they're not. I usually check the, the screws here to make sure everything's nice and tight. And back here is the posts. 
that we'll be using for the 12 volt DC and they are red and black. And then here is the really the fuel line coming up that we'll hook in and then it goes into the fuel filter. This looks to be set up pretty well. If we look at the bottom really quick, just flip it over. We've got our intake here. And this is the fuel line. See, oh, see, we got sort of a kink here. Let's just kind of straighten that out just a little bit. Maybe pull some of this down. We'll be good. And then we've got our exhaust here. So this comes out. So let's put the lid back on and let's get back to our test. Okay, now that our, um, you know, we've checked the lines and everything, we're going to put the intake hose in. So this comes with a whole load of everything you'll need to mount this to wood and everything else. I got to be honest with you, the only thing we're going to really use is a couple of these hose clamps and we're going to use one zip tie to put it on the fan in the back and that's really it. Let's go ahead and put, put the, uh, the intake hose on as well as the intake filter. So we're going to take our hose clamp and our intake tube and we're just going to put this on here nice and simple. Now this is wedged underneath of here. It does have a screen right here where you can come in with a screwdriver. All right, so let's take our screwdriver and let's go in through this little screen here and we will tighten this guy up. Okay, now that your hose is up, we're just gonna, it's got a little hole for it to filter back to the back side. We'll just bring it up. And then from here, we will put on the air intake filter and we'll put another hose clamp on it. So let's go ahead and put the hose clamp on first. Put our filter on. And you kind of screw it in, get it all the way down, get it on nice and tight. And then we will tighten down our filter hose clamp. All right, that's nice and tight. And so we got this fan here. This really just acts as almost like a cooling fan. And I usually just will put a zip tie through those holes there, this one right here, and just kind of fish this in and then we'll tie it up with a zip tie. So now our intake is on all the way. And so the next step is to take uh, this, turn it on its side and we'll put our exhaust on. And just like before, this, this, this is our exhaust hose. Kind of open it up a little bit. And we're going to need to bend one side. I usually take this side right here that's a little shorter. And this is going to be the side I put on the unit. We'll get a hose clamp. Put it on here. And just like before, we'll put this on. Take our screwdriver, go in through this nice little hole we got here. And we'll just screw this in place. And we'll have our exhaust tube on. And then we'll put the muffler on. Okay, our exhaust line is on. Now these diesel heaters, they have a, they have something I really don't like here. They have these feet that come out, but they're not very tall. So usually you have to put these on blocks. But what I do is I usually take this and I bend it really to the right as far as it will go. Get it in here tight. And then that'll give me enough room to where I've got this kind of set up. And this will be our setup for the exhaust tube. So next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put the muffler on. All right, this is the muffler. This is supposed to quiet it down a little bit. It's pretty simple. It does, if you need to mount it, it does have a mounting hole and it does have a drain hole right here. So I usually push this position down and I usually have the, the muffler or the exhaust actually go down at an angle just in case there is any condensation or anything that gets built up in here. This very easily sits on here. Let's put on our hose clamp. Let's mount this guy in. So this is kind of what it will look like just like that. Let's go ahead and mount it on. All right, our hose clamp is now on our muffler, which is attached to our exhaust, which is attached to the inlet here. And so I'm gonna put this thing up, back up on the top. And you can see here, it doesn't really fit as flush as it would, because I got this exhaust coming out, which gets super hot. So the next thing we're gonna do is put this up on blocks. So I've got this sitting up on two blocks here, just so that we can get it elevated and get this off of here. And you can see where I've actually done this in the past and gotten some burn marks from these diesel heaters. But this is off at an angle now, and then we've got our drain hole downward. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to hook up to these two posts here. We got black for negative and red for positive. We'll take these off, and then we will put our 12 volt DC uh, adapter on. Now, I do like these Wipros. 
and that they do come with these posts. I used some other uh, brands in the past. And they just come with a wire and they expect you to solder it together or, or crimp it. This one's nice, they're nice and set up. Just easily put them on and you can easily take them off too if you need to disassemble. So we got our red and our black lines on. Let's turn this around, let's get it set up for how we're gonna do, and then we'll hook up the power to it and just make sure that we've got the digital display on before we fill this thing up with diesel fuel. Okay, we've got this set up now, we're on our blocks. We've got our exhaust down at an angle. We've got our muffler down here. We've got our drip line so that if there's any condensation in the muffler, it will come out and we won't have any backup or clogs. Everything is attached. We've got our intake ready to go here. We've got our 24 volt DC cable attached and we've got our blue eddy. It is turned on. Let's go ahead and turn on DC. And so we will plug in our cigarette type adapter. And when we do that, we should, and we do get some power on here. Now I, I really like the display on these whip pros versus some others because you do get some animation in here to let you know when things occur. Now, we don't have any uh, diesel fuel in here, so let's, let's, let's fill this up really quickly with a gallon. Before we get started, we do have a few things left. So this was all the extra hardware that it came with. I ended up throwing this away. This is if you need to mount. We do have a couple extra additional hose clamps that go onto here for your adapters. And then again, we've got the manual, which you see that we haven't used at all. So our next piece of this is just turn this on. This display is very simple. It's got some okay here for readings. It's got some up and down for your temperature and then a power. We're just gonna click it on and it's going to start. So now we have on, we're starting to get some displays. I love this animation. It starts showing that we are spinning here and this unit has started. We're starting to get some airflow. Kind of hear it a little bit. And this is up and running and it's starting its sequence. So now we're a little further into the startup and you can see here we've got some another animation for the glow plug. That redness right there underneath the numbers is started up. And if we look over here on the Blue Eddy, we're pulling about 100 watts, which uh, these whip pros are very efficient. And now the initial pump is starting to kick in. Let's see if we can hear it. Now, regardless of which units you're using, they're all going to have this clicking on the when it's priming the pump. Now we can also see we got some new animation here where we got the fuel pump has now been displayed up here along with the glow plug. And we can see we got these two uh, blinking, which means we got air going out and air coming in. All right, so now we're a couple minutes into this. You can kind of hear it really starting up. You can really hear the fans kicking in. All right, this unit is is fired up now. You can see here some, some smoke coming off of this uh, metal tubing as it's burning off. Hadn't had any smoke actually come out of the unit. I can feel some exhaust coming out, and but you can hear it. And then you can also see some things just burning off. Now, they do recommend that you give these things a couple hours to burn off. Everything that I've done right now is showing it right out of the box. It hasn't ran before. This is just the startup steps. All right, so we got some more indicators here showing we are at stage four. It's got these nice little bars. Once we get a little bit further into this, the fans are blowing, getting lots of kind of smoke coming off of the uh, exhaust as well as the metal tubing or the stainless steel tubing as it's just burning off. It'll start changing colors in a little bit. I do have a carbon monoxide uh, monitor in here to make sure we're not going to die. I did open the garage door and I got a fan in here kind of blowing this stuff out. You can see we're starting to get a little smoke coming out of the, the end here. I just turned the temperature down a little bit. This will happen right on the beginnings. Again, we've got some fans in here getting everything out. But as soon as it came, it's gone. And now we're on our low setting. Okay, we've taken this diesel heater, put it together, set it up, and now it's, it's, it's running and it's running efficiently. So we are fully charged all the way up to the top ones. I took this down and put it on the low settings. You can see here we've got the fuel pump is lit up, but our glow plug is no longer lit up. And I did have a little smoke right out of the gate uh, when I turned it down a little bit, but at this point it's just doing its thing. Now, one thing I want everybody to uh, understand is 
This was super simple to put it together. We just unboxed it, we hooked up the intake hose, we put the exhaust and muffler on, we wired this up, we put some fuel in it, and we turned it on. That's all you have to do with these things. Uh, there are error codes and they're in this manual if you need them. I have never once hit an error code other than what's called an error code eight, which means basically it's out of fuel or out of oil or whatever they call that. It is, it is moving along right now, it's doing its thing. What I'd like to do is kind of show you how hot this is after it's been running for about 30 minutes on low, and then we'll turn it up to high so you can kind of see what it looks like there in our garage setting. And then what I like to do is take this unit and move it outside and let's uh, do some hard testing on it. So let's put it on low with one gallon of diesel fuel, see how long it'll go. And then let's put it on high and see how long it'll go. It's little brother over here. Again, got 30 hours out of one gallon of diesel fuel and then 11 hours out of one gallon of diesel fuel. But it is a five kilowatt. This one may take a little bit more energy. Now pricing wise, how much are these things? You can get this on Amazon right now. Here's some links for $129.90. I think there's a coupon code there as well for five or 10 bucks off. And um, they're ready to go and they, they ship pretty quickly. So safety wise, I know these things are safe and we have the exhaust pointing outward uh, for CO2, but I always have a CO2 monitor around just in case for anything, whether I'm in my garage doing this or whether I'm in a rooftop tent, even just having the exhaust hose coming up, I always have this there in, in, in my tent just for safety purposes. So why do we need a diesel heater? Um, you know, I get a lot of questions on that too. Why not just use the, the big buddy that we got over here for the Mr. Heater? One of the reasons I don't like those is they have an open flame and I always feel like I'm gonna burn the place down. I used to use them. The other thing I don't like about them is they are a wet heat and you'll get condensation up in your, your tent and then you gotta let it dry out before you can put it away or you gotta bring it home and open everything up. A diesel heater uh, is very efficient. I'll let your and sitting outside, there's no flame, there's just the tube that goes up in there, and it is a dry heat, and I do mean a dry heat. It will dry everything out, there'll be zero condensation the next day. All right, let's take some measurements and see what's coming out of this thing now. All right, we've had this thing on for about 10 minutes. If we just take a look here and hit zap this thing, we are about 289 degrees right here at the center of our heat exchanger. Now this is super hot. Let's just take a look at what the elbow usually is. We're about 140, 160 degrees is exposed. If we come down here a little bit further, the heat does dissipate. We're about 100 degrees um, at the end of the muffler. So I tell you what, let's let this uh, burn off just for a little bit and then we'll turn it up to high and see where we're at on our measurements. So turning this thing up and down is, is pretty simple. This display really doesn't do a lot. It kind of gives you some, you can program it a little bit, give it some start times and stop times. I really don't do any of that stuff. I just kind of use the up and down. But uh, right now we've been running for about 14 minutes. We're just gonna turn this all the way up. It's in Hertz. And so we'll go all the way up and you'll hear this really ramp up. It's just... All right, we're at 5.4 Hertz and you can hear it kicking in. So while we're waiting for this thing to ramp up so we can take some temperature readings, I wanted to really touch on one other thing very quickly. So this does have this power button up there uh, for turning it on and off. And obviously some people like to pull just the plug out. And I've done this in the past as well. When you turn this off, it doesn't completely turn off. You'll hear the fans will still keep going and stuff. There are some things going on inside the unit that it needs to perform for a proper shutdown. It has to burn off some things inside of there, burn off some fuel, some carbon, and uh, it needs to complete its cycle. So don't just pull this out when you're done with it. Hit the power button, make sure it goes to off, and then give it just a bit of time and it will just shut itself off and you'll stop hearing anything. All right, we're at a full 20 minutes um, that's been running. So we're on mid on high for about five minutes. And if we just take some readings in here, it's a lot hotter now. We're about 340 degrees internally on our, no, actually, I'm sorry, we're about 360 degrees right inside our heat exchanger. We look at the elbow. We're about 300 degrees here as well, 315 somewhere in there. We go midway, kind of goes down a little bit around 150. And if we come down here to the exhaust, roughly in that uh, 150 range as well. So it's gotten a lot hotter. 
you can see how easy one of these are to put together. Anyone can do it. You don't have to be a, a rocket scientist. These used to come in these kits and you'd put them together and do all this stuff and there'd be all these issues. You did, a, you did need a little bit more technical skills, but not anymore. These are, these are very simple units. So what I'm going to do now is a test I do on all of these. And I will say these Whip Pro seem to be much more efficient in how they operate than the other ones are. Both ticking noise, these things are super quiet. I will have to say, uh, some of these other ones, and I don't want to get into the manufacturers because they've sent them to me, but not Whip Pro. Uh, you know, they have these large ticking noises. You have to look at replacing the fuel pump because there is a lot of metal to metal on there where you do get the ticking. These are quiet, and we'll look at this as we're doing the test on low and on high. We'll get really close with the ticking noise. So without further ado, let's take this outside, put more diesel fuel back into it, get it all the way to the top, and let's do two tests. Our first test will be on low for how long it will go. Its little brother went 30 hours. I'm kind of curious how long this will go because that's a five kilowatt. This is an eight kilowatt. And then our second test will be on high. How long will it go? Again, the little brother went 11 hours. Um, kind of curious. Now again, emphasize this earlier on turning these off. All you gotta do is hit this power button. Just hold it down and it goes to off. Now it's, it didn't just turn off, but it's starting to cycle down and it's gonna go through its shutdown process. You can hear it quieting down. All right, we are 23 hours and 33 minutes into our test on low with one gallon of diesel fuel. Let's take a look at a couple things. We are pulling between five and 10 watts on our blue Eddy AC 180. And if we look here, uh, what are we pulling? Basically, we are about 275 degrees coming out. If we look at the elbow, we are about 120 degrees. And if we look at the exhaust, we are about 60 degrees. Now it is freezing out here. It is currently 43 degrees. And if we look here, we have used about a little over three quarters of the tank of gas. And so this is going along pretty good. I think uh, we'll have to see if it gets to 30 hours like his little brother on one gallon of diesel fuel on low. I tell you what, those tests turned out a little differently than I thought it would did. Test one on low with an eight kilowatt uh, Whip Pro diesel heater with one gallon of diesel fuel, 30 hours and 24 minutes. Now that is a little longer than its little brother that was the five kilowatt. I was expecting this to go less. So a little surprising. All right, it is freezing out here. It's about 25 degrees. Next up, our next test is going to be to reload this up with another gallon of diesel fuel. And we're going to turn it on high and see how long it will go. Okay, on the high test, uh, we are two hours and 10 minutes into this. It is pulling about 40 to 45 watts off the Blue Eddy AC 180. And it is, it is toasty. We take a look at our reading coming out of the main heat exchanger, we are roughly about 300 and let's see, we're about 360 degrees. If we look at the corner here, we're about 343, really, really hot. If we take a look at the muffler, we are at 129 degrees. Now it is absolutely freezing out here. It's 24 degrees. Uh, now again, this last one on the little brother went about 11 hours. We're at two hours and 10 minutes. I'm expecting it to go about the same based on the test with the low. Well, we're gonna finish up this uh, test results inside. It is absolutely freezing outside. Here's some temp, it's a little bit early. You know, things this turned out uh, with this Whip Pro 8 kilowatt uh, version, almost identical to what the five kilowatt version. If we look at our test results on low with one gallon of diesel fuel, we went 30 hours and 24 minutes. Wow. That means on going out, overlanding, whatever, you can do multiple days on a single gallon of diesel fuel. On high, we went 11 hours and six minutes. Better than I had anticipated us doing. I was, I was pretty impressed. I tell you what, I'm really liking these Whip Pro units. They are quiet. You can put them outside and that ticking noise, and there is some ticking, but it's, it, it's very low, it's very quiet. Very impressed with them. Again, if you're looking at buying one of these, there is a link in the description, and they are running $129.90 on Amazon right now, and there also is a, a coupon link in there that you can get some, 
either five or 10 bucks off. But hey, that is a wrap. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you got a lot of value out of this content, please click that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click that bell to be notified when we got new content out. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Everybody have a great day.